What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Alia if you are new here. So I know it's been a while since I filmed the part one of my 30 no Botox no filler three part series. We are now on to part two which is my nighttime routine and now I am about to be 31 <laughs> so in like a week and a half so I guess maybe I should rename the title 30 plus but whatever. Anyways as I mentioned in my last video, there's absolutely nothing wrong with getting Botox or filler. It's completely your choice. It's your body. Do whatever you want to do. This is just for people who want preventative anti-aging measures or they simply don't want to jump right into getting Botox and fillers just yet. Maybe they're scared of needles. You know, there's tons of different reasons. So this is just the platform where I discuss that. As always, everything that I share in today's video will be linked down below in the description box with any discount codes if I can find any for you guys. And timestamps will be linked down below as well, so if you want to skip through the video to certain areas, you certainly can do that. Although I highly recommend you watch it all the way through because I have a ton of great products to share with you guys today. So if that sounds good to you, then please continue watching. So as always, in every nighttime routine, assuming we're wearing makeup, if you're not wearing makeup, you might want to skip this part, but you want to obviously cleanse your skin and remove that makeup. So I have a couple things here that I really like. The basic one is the micellar water. I like the Garnier one. That's real simple. It's like three bucks for a big one. That does the job great. If you have really dry skin or you just need like a little extra, I don't know, like zhuzh to your makeup routine, or I find this one actually to be really great if I still tan my face. It's less stripping of the tan. I really like my Youth to the People Superberry Dream Cleansing Balm. So this one's really popular. I'm sure you guys have heard of this. This one's great. Honestly, it's like, you can see I've used quite a bit of it. This just literally melts your makeup off. It gives the perfect, like soft, smooth, kind of like glowy feel. I mean, obviously it is a cleansing balm, so it's gonna feel kind of oily, but once you rinse your face off, you don't feel stripped. This one is so nice. It is a little more like expensive. I'd say it's probably like $30 or something like that. Don't quote me on that. It'll be linked down below. But I do love this. If I have heavy makeup on after like a night out, I will reach for this one. On the days where I'm feeling really lazy and I don't wanna use that or even like the micellar water, I recently picked, I know I'm late to the game on this. Okay, don't come for me. But the microfiber like makeup erasers, why didn't I try this like years ago when it came out? Like, I don't know. I got a three pack of these on Amazon and I literally cannot live without them. They are amazing. And like, I just use, th this one's clean, but it's like kind of stained. But I just use like a part of it every night that I lay it out to dry. So you don't have to like use it once and then wash it. You can get away with like three to five days use of this. I, you just wet it underwater cold water, warm water, hot water, and then you just go like this and it literally removes everything. Like, does all microfiber do that? I'm confused. I don't know how this works. This is magic, super cheap. I think it was like three for 10. I'll link it down below, but honestly, great for travel because you know, this is heavy, this is glass. Like, it's a little more difficult to travel with this, even the micellar water, unless you get the little travel size. This is just so easy. You just roll it up and you can just stick it right in your suitcase or your carry-on so easy so i love this so that is my favorite cleansing products for removing my makeup and then for face wash or facial cleanser you guys know i love the crave matcha hemp hydrating cleanser i talked about that in my part one video so i will link that down below i'm not going to discuss the benefits of that one again a new one that was recently sent to me from yes style is this Iunic, it's, I, I'm probably saying it wrong, it's I-U-N-I-K. This is their Centella Mild Cleansing Foam. It has Centella Asiatic Extract, 49.9%. Skin Relief and Moisturizing pH Balancing for all skin types, so it's for, it's a pH 5.5. I love a pH balancing cleanser in general, like the, the Crave one is the same. It's also pH balancing, so it's not going to like damage your skin barrier, strip it of its moisture. This one is more of like a cream consistency. So if you have like really sensitive skin, you might love this one. I would say this is even more gentle than the matcha hemp one. It looks actually really similar, honestly, to the Create Beauty one. But this is just amazing. I love this and I think it might be even cheaper than the Crave one. The Crave one's like $16 or something. This might be like 12. Again, it'll be linked down below, but love this. So in my nighttime routine, I do tend to rotate between 
a few different products throughout the week. That's because some of these products cannot be, you know, like meshed together or you know they don't work well together like you don't want to use like exfoliants and bhas with retinols or tretinoin you know certain things it'll like burn your skin or it'll just make the product not effective so we don't want to be wasting our money and we also don't want to be burning our skin so we'll start with an og here that i have been using for years now and this is what really 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 like initially resurfaced my skin it really helped with a lot of like the fine lines and wrinkles and things like that and also really really helped with my acne i had like a phase where i just had really bad adult acne i also had like a hormone imbalance so i was getting lots of breakouts and this really saved my life this is the paula's choice two percent bha liquid exfoliant with salicylic acid so this is meant to unclog and shrink in large pores smooth and even skin so I have the little mini one because I bought this for travel, but I'm sure you've heard of this. It's like a cult favorite. I don't currently use an exfoliant very often anymore, and you'll find out why later on because I started using a tretinoin, which I'll speak about in a bit. But I used to use this every single night and or every other night because I'd alternate it with like a retinol. But now I would use it maybe like once a week something like that the salicylic acid in this is ideal for someone with oily or acne prone skin like i said it just really works to unclog pores like nothing else i've ever tried as far as like i've tried tons of different acne products this is the only thing that has ever worked for me and i swear by it i recommend it to literally anyone who will listen <laughs> now when i apply this i just pour a bit of the liquid into my hands and then i pat them together and i pat this all over my face my neck and down my chest because sometimes you know i do get like little bumps here breakouts from like sweating at the gym or whatever and i just really am in the habit of taking all of my skincare from my face down to my neck and chest. I feel like that's just a good thing to do and it can't hurt. You will notice that this kind of leaves your skin with like a little bit of like a shiny, tacky appearance. That will fade, but I usually wait like an hour, two hours before applying any other skincare products over it just to really let it absorb in. So in conjunction with my Paula's Choice, I use my Inky List Retinol Eye Cream. This is just an affordable eye cream, but I feel like, you know, it's hydrating enough it has a little bit of retinol in there, not too much to where it's going to like irritate your eyes. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, you know, eye cream is like a waste of money. Like it could be, but also I feel like eye creams tend to be a little bit more hydrating because the, uh, the skin around your eyes is a lot, you know, more fragile and more sensitive and can get more dry. So the formula is a little different, but I do really like this. I use this every night. It is very affordable, so... You're not gonna break the bank and then i also like to use my ordinary 100 percent cold pressed organic rosehip seed oil again this is so amazing i lay you can layer this over literally anything like i've layered this over retinol i've layered this over even my tretinoin it's like the last step if you have like either really dry skin or you really need the benefits from the rosehip seed oil, you can layer it over your moisturizer as a very last step to seal and lock in all of that moisture. So this honestly, I would give a lot of credit to transforming my skin. This is like my secret weapon. And again, it's something that I have recommended to so many people and everyone really has loved it. Rosehip seed oil is rich in vitamin A, C, and E and helps with acne prevention and cell turnover. It also works synergistically to combat visible signs of sun damage and vitamin E is also known to quell irritation for those who have sensitive skin. So this is really just like a bang for your buck. It packs a punch, but not in an irritating way to your skin. Like, like I've said, I've used this over products that are really like an irritant to your skin, like retinol and tretinoin, and I've never experienced any like burning sensation or itching or redness from this at all. This is also packed with fatty acids, which play a huge role in nourishing and moisturizing your skin. So these anti-inflammatory fatty acids combined with vitamin A and vitamin C allow the rosehip oil to treat signs of aging and pigmentation, which really did make a big difference in like fading a lot of the dark spots I had. So obviously vitamin C is very important for that. I use vitamin C in my morning routine. So I feel like adding this into my nighttime routine gave me like an extra like oomph to like, you know, fading all of those spots. Like I said in my part one, I did struggle with like a ton of dark spots and scarring from acne on my forehead and 
just you know overall signs of like small little hints of sun damage poking through you know i lived in the desert for a really long time i didn't wear sunscreen you know where this is going so not only is vitamin a known to help boost the production of collagen which is why it is often found in any like retin-a products it also evens your skin texture and helps to reduce and eliminate wrinkles just something to note, this does make your skin look oily. It is an oil, that's why I use it in my nighttime routine. If you suffer from extremely dry skin, you could use this in the morning if you wanted that extra glow. Personally, it's too much for me, so I like to use this at night. And I would recommend doing like all of your skincare routine a few hours before bed. That way you're not just kind of like immediately putting an oil on and laying on your pillow because then you're just gonna get your pillow sticky, so wouldn't recommend that. Now let's move on into retinol. So when it comes to retinol, I always suggest building up to a higher percentage. If you have extremely sensitive skin, use like a 0.2% retinol, move up to a 0.5% and then up to a 1%. And once you've used a 1% for a while, if you still feel like you need more, then you can move up to a tretinoin, which is a much stronger form of retinol. Now when I was using retinol when I first started out, I was using the ordinary 0.5% retinol and I was putting that on my face, neck, and chest about two times a week. And I did not experience any irritation from this. Initially, I did try to use a 1% retinol from Drunken Elephant and that really caused like a lot of flaking and irritation. So that's why it's good to start out slow. I don't even have sensitive skin normally. So if that's happening to me, it's really going to affect people who do experience sensitivity. In addition to putting that on my face, neck, and chest, I also like to put those products on the backs of my hands and even as far as down the tops of my arms. I do have some sunspots on my arms and hands tend to show age first, like hands and neck, so it's always good to bring those products to those places, especially if you notice you're seeing like early signs of aging in those areas. Eventually I moved up into using my Image ND. This is a clinical skincare restoring retinol booster. And this actually is kind of interesting because it is like in an oil format. And I actually really like that. I do prefer products that are in kind of like an oil format as you'll see kind of throughout this routine. This one I really love. I do put this on again. I put it on my neck, chest, hands, and backs of arms every single night now. I used to put it on my face probably two to three times a week once I built up from the other 0.5% retinol from the ordinary. I don't put this on my face anymore because I use a tretinoin, which I'll get to towards the end of this video. But this has just been amazing. I feel like it's less irritating in an oil form. The ordinary one was also in an oil form. For some reason, I feel like the like more I don't know, cream type ones tend to irritate my skin more. Not sure why that is. So I'm not gonna dive too deep into the benefits of retinol in this video because it'll be really long and there's tons of scientific research to back the fact that it is pretty much the only scientifically tested anti-aging product out there with a lot of research to back it. But it is scientifically proven to combat aging by minimizing fine lines and pores, and it also helps to boost and stimulate collagen production. It's also great for people who experience oily skin and breakouts because it can regulate those. So the next product I'm going to talk about is more recent, probably within the last three and a half months I started using, and that is a Retin-A or Tretinoin. This is 0.0 five percent so this is i think the lowest that you can start at or the second to lowest it might be like 0.02 is the lowest don't quote me on that but this has to be prescribed by a dermatologist so i went in had my skin looked at kind of talked about my concerns just more so that i wanted a preventative anti-aging measure something a little bit stronger than a retinol and so i was prescribed this and this can be extremely irritating to skin, especially if you are not starting with a retinol first, like I suggested. You can definitely experience a lot of burning and flaking. So like I said before, please start with a retinol and build up to this if you feel like you need this. So currently for the past three months, I have been applying this to my face, my neck, and the backs of my hands. So tretinoin is used to treat acne, sun damage, and fine lines, and it is currently the most effective form of anti-aging skincare on the market. 
So I'm going to read like the differences between the two here just so that you can really get a clear understanding of how tretinoin and retinol differ. There's not a huge difference, but there still is one. Both tretinoin and retinol are topical skincare products and can treat the same conditions. They both promote rapid exfoliation and stimulation of collagen and elastin, which leads to smoother looking skin, but they're not quite the same. So retinol is a natural and milder version of vitamin A, which can be purchased over the counter. Tretinoin is a synthetic vitamin A and is a stronger concentration and is only available by prescription. So like I mentioned with Tret, it is known to be a huge irritation to your skin and it does deter a lot of people from continuing use or even trying it at all, but I'm going to share how I have actually managed to pretty much completely avoid any signs of irritation with my skin. Now, like I mentioned before, you want to build up to it with a use of a retinol, I would say for a good like eight months before even considering trying a tretinoin product at all. So like I said, once my skin could tolerate the 1% retinol without flaking, that is when I then moved to use tretinoin. The other thing that is extremely important is you want to use a thick moisturizing cream as a barrier between the tretinoin and your skin, and then you want to apply that moisturizer on top of the tretinoin after. This is going to make such a difference. I'll share the one that I love in just a moment with you guys. I feel like it was like the best find of the year for me personally. Now it's really important with tretinoin to not be mixing in a bunch of other products. You definitely don't want to be using any sorts of acids. Really it's best just to leave it on its own with a barrier cream. And I had no issue again mixing with my inky list retinol eye cream but that is also because i'm not putting the tretinoin around my eyes you can do that but you want to be very very careful and do it very sparingly because it is really strong and the skin around your eyes is very sensitive so you wouldn't want to be mixing it with like your paula's choice i wouldn't recommend mixing it with really anything else uh you can put on your rosehip seed oil later on in the night i've done that not had any issue with that so the key is to start slow Start out once a week, see how it's doing. If you don't experience any irritation, you can move up to twice a week and then so on and so forth. I haven't been able to progress past twice a week without experiencing some flaking and that's okay. Some people just can't tolerate putting it on every single night. That doesn't mean that you're not gonna experience the benefits of it, you will. So don't feel like you have to force yourself or force your skin or rush things to use it every single night of the week. Twice a week is still shown to show results. So I would say what really made a huge difference in me not experiencing any of this burning or flaking is actually this ceramide cream here. So this is by the brand Illyun and this is a ceramide atto concentrate cream. It is a Korean skincare product. I believe I got this on Stylevana or Yes Style. I think you can get it on Amazon as well. So like I said, everything will be linked down below. This was such a good deal for this giant thing. I think there's a promotion going on. I'm pretty sure I got this for literally $3. I think normally it's around like 12, but still you get a lot in here for your money. So when I was on the website, I was looking for, you know, a thick barrier moisturizing cream. And this one actually had tons of reviews of people saying that they pair this with their tretinoin and then it works amazing. And I was like, perfect. That is exactly what I'm looking for. So immediately I was like, hey, you're coming home with me. And I threw it in the cart right away. So it's fragrance free and it is perfect for people who have sensitive skin. This does not cause any irritation. It is very gentle on your skin. So what I like to do with this is I apply a good amount on my face, my neck, and the backs of my hands. And then I apply the tretinoin and then I apply this again on top of that. And that is how I have avoided having irritation. Now, before I apply the tretinoin, there's something else that I feel like is extremely important to share to avoid irritation, and that is slugging. Now you're probably like, what the heck is that? Excuse me? Like, am I rubbing a slug on my face? No. Basically, slugging is when you put a balm or a petroleum jelly type product on the sensitive parts of your face, i.e. around your eyes, sides of your nose, over your lips, that is where I put this product. So this is the Aquaphor Soothing Skin Balm. I find slugging to be really important for around my eyes, especially because it prevents trans epidermal water loss, which is really not good for your skin in general, but especially those delicate areas around your eyes where fine lines and wrinkles are more likely to form sooner. So this just helps by trapping that moisture in there. So I put on my eye cream first, and then I put this over that, 
and I just do it all around my eyes, around my nose, over my lips. And I do that after I have used my Ceramide moisturizer and before I use my Tretinoin. So this is also going to help protect those sensitive areas from irritation that can be caused by Tretinoin. So you don't want to put the Tretinoin on first and then put this on because then you'll get real irritation. But this first, then this golden. So that is how I've avoided any sort of irritation by using tretinoin. I notice if I try to bump it up three times a week, I don't get burning or anything, but I do notice like a tiny bit of flaking. I'll, also, the other thing I will say is I stopped self-tanning my face and I only self-tan the rest of my body because this is constantly exfoliating your skin. You're just exfoliating off the tan. So I just leave it to a good foundation to match the rest of my body. And then I just have a pale face. You guys are probably like, are you done? <laughs> Sorry, there's only a couple more products left, I promise. And again, you don't have to use all of these every week. Like, honestly, the most simple skincare routine is probably the best, but I just wanted to share with you all of the products that I reach for on a regular basis. It might not be realistic for everyone, but it's what works for me. So the next one is also a newer addition to my skincare routine and that is the ordinary buffet plus copper peptides one percent copper peptides are so beneficial for skin health i don't know why i didn't know about this sooner if you haven't tried it i absolutely recommend it and this is a little more pricey as far as an ordinary product i think this retails for about 30 dollars it's a multi-technology peptide serum peptides are incredibly important for anti-aging so I put this all over my face and on my neck. So I'm going to read the description of this product because honestly, there are so many peptides that I can't memorize the name of them and I probably can't pronounce half of them. So bear with me. But basically this formula combines a comprehensive array of studied technologies that target multiple signs of aging at once. The technologies are direct copper peptides, also known as copper tripeptide 1, matrixyl 3000, peptide complex with palmitoyl tetrapeptide 7, <laughs> matrixyl sin 6, with palmitoyl tripeptide 38, sin ache or AKE peptide complex. There's also acetyl hexapeptide 8, and pentapeptide 18 and it has a probiotic complex in there so that is a mouthful and i probably butchered half of those names and it is all solubilized in a base of 11 skin friendly amino acids and multiple forms of hyaluronic acid and hyaluronic acid is also extremely important i did talk about that in my morning routine and i actually did just go get a facial and she was like your skin looks really good the only thing is you look a little dehydrated sis and i was like yeah i need to drink more water uh working on it but she was saying that i really just should up my hyaluronic acid use so that's why i love this i do instantly feel like my skin looks plumper and just more youthful and more hydrated so like i mentioned peptides are very important peptides are amino acids and they are the building blocks of certain proteins needed by our skin like collagen and elastin which are the first things to start depleting right about when you hit like 25 30 your skin loses a significant amount of collagen and elastin. And so it is really important to try to combat that as best we can and as early on as possible. Using a serum or a moisturizer that contains peptides can lead to firmer, younger looking skin and even fewer breakouts, which is amazing. So like I mentioned earlier, I do get you know hormonal breakouts, particularly in this area right here. Very annoying. I didn't always, it's kind of like a new thing. At first I thought it was like mask knee when we were still wearing face masks all the time, but it has, it's here to stay. So hate that for me. And the last product that I have to share with you guys, I don't use it as often because of how frequently I use these other products, but that is my resveratrol 3% ferulic acid 3% by The Ordinary. <laughs> Lots of ordinary here. We love an affordable skincare routine. The serum houses two of the most powerful antioxidants in the skincare industry, and they are both plant-derived. Resveratrol is scientifically proven to combat and even reverse signs of aging, and I'm not gonna talk about that in this video because in my part three, I will dive more into that when I talk about all of the other things that I do to kind of combat signs of aging. That's basically anything that is not directly skincare related. But I'll give you a little hint. It comes in other forms. The high concentration of both antioxidants defends against free radicals and defies signs of aging. 
The resveratrol in this formulation is 100% derived from Japanese knotwood, while ferulic acid comes from the cell walls of plants, such as oats and the seeds of apples. When applied, you will notice like a warming sensation, at least I do, but don't be alarmed. It doesn't like burn or anything. I just feel my face getting kind of warm. It doesn't get red though. So that might just be me. If you have very sensitive skin, I don't know how this will react, so definitely patch test it. Antioxidants are super important and they should not be slept on. So that is why I love this product and it comes at a very affordable price point. So that is it for today, guys, from your almost 31 year old friend on YouTube here. That is my nighttime anti-aging kind of like preventative measure skincare routine. I really hope you got some useful information out of this and really enjoyed it. I am all about aging gracefully. That's not to say that one day I will not get Botox. I'm sure someday down the road I will, but for now I'm just really trying to up my skincare game and just be really on top of it. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up on your way out. It really helps me with the algorithm and thank you so much for watching.